And, uh, and today we're going to begin a, a new series. It's called uh, Sustainable. It's uh, nine characteristics of a spirit-powered life. You know, uh, to sustainable, it's, it's been able to continue over a long period of time. And uh, last month, my wife Michelle and I, we celebrated 30 years of marriage. Amen. It's a big shout out to Michelle. And uh, she's getting more beautiful every day and uh, just uh, blessed to, to have her partner with me. But you know, it's, it's, uh, it's easy to, to start something. You know, we started our life together July 27th, 1991. But it's not easy to sustain something. On Jan- July 27, 2021, last month, we looked at each other and we said, it's not been easy, but we thank God for where he's brought us. And it's easy to start things, but it's not so easy to sustain them. You know, we, uh, we, had, we, have, we have some laughs and there's a lot of things, obviously, in 30 years of marriage that... Uh, you know, you go through, uh, but uh, one particular time I, I said to Michelle that I was going to be a vegetarian. And it, uh, it, uh, five days, it, w- it was easy. I, I was doing well. Michelle was real supportive. And, uh, and then we went to a restaurant. And I said, well, I'm going I'm to be okay. Uh, I'm going to look at the menu. I'm going to find something, you know, that's vegetarian. And I, I, I found something. And next thing, be just before I was going to order my meal, uh, the, the waitress said, you know, the special for today is uh, all you can eat ribs for $10. <laughs> and uh, I can only say that I entered the restaurant a vegetarian, uh, but I did not leave a vegetarian because I had all this sauce all over me. Uh, from those amazing ribs. You know, uh, that's a joke, but, uh, you know, there's moments in our life when something becomes uh, central to us. You know, it could be about our health. Uh, You know, it it could be about education. It could be about relationships. Uh, It it could be about career choices. There's moments in our life, and we can can have them sometimes every day, where, where we have clarity that we have to do something. We have to start something. But, you know, it's, it's a challenge uh, to ma- maintain that moment over a long period of time. Because we need power. In order to take a moment and maintain it over a lifetime, we need power. Now, if you're not a a Christ follower, you know, that power is often willpower. And for those who are watching online, you know, if you're not a Christ follower, you know, we we say, yes, willpower. You know, I will do this. I will go on a diet. I will exercise. I, I will study. I will build in that relationship. But willpower is never enough power. And so we're in this series because we believe that as Christ followers, and a Christ follower is a person who puts Christ at the center of their life, and and we can do that in a moment, but in order to maintain Christ as a center of our life, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to sustain us. And we can, we can know, obviously, what is at the center of our life because whatever is at the center of our life has characteristics. So, for instance, if someone has money at the center of their life, there's characteristics for that. One of the characteristics is greed rather than generosity. And we're going to look at this series because, you know, we want to, we want to continue to have Christ at the center of our life, and we want to uh, access the, the power of the Holy Spirit because He wants to bring out the characteristics of Christ in our life. And the question we're going to ask today is, you know, how do I sustain the Christ-centered life? If I'm a, a believer in Christ, if I have Christ at the center of my life, how do I sustain that? 
And so we're going we're gonna to look because in, in the Bible, the great news is that there's a whole book of the Bible on how to sustain uh, the Christ-centered life, and that is the book of Galatians. Now, Galatians was written by the Apostle Paul, and it was written to a church that started the Christian life. They began a relationship with Christ, but something happened, and they were in danger of not being able to sustain it because of outside influences. And so Paul writes this letter to them. And we're going to pick it up in uh, Galatians chapter 5. And this is what he reads, or this is what he writes to to the Galatians. He says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, or patience, other translations, Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Let me just let you see here that what we're looking at here is the characteristics of Christ himself. That the, the Holy Spirit is given to us to reflect the characteristics of Christ in our life. Christ is love. Christ is joy. Christ is peace. Christ is forbearance. Christ is kindness. Christ is goodness. Christ is faithfulness. Christ is gentleness. And Christ is self-control. Ain't ain't you glad that we don't get what we deserve sometimes? That God has self-control in Christ for us. And he says, against such things, there is no law. And then going on to verse uh, 24, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. And so we want to ask ourselves, you know, how do we sustain uh, the Christian life through the power of the Holy Spirit? Well, we can look at this and we can say, well, you know, maybe, maybe this is the answer. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Is, th- is that the answer? Do we sustain the Christian life by crucifying the flesh with its passions and desires? Because you see, the one thing that we need to understand is that when we begin the Christian life, We begin a war. We war between the flesh and the spirit. Now, the flesh is that which is unspiritual. It's it's the passions and desires that are not under the control of the Holy Spirit. And we war with that. You know, when we begin the Christian life, when we put our trust in Jesus, war breaks out. And if you're not at war with the spirit and the flesh, we got to ask ourselves, well, am I a Christ follower? Because the moment you become a Christ follower, you begin a war with the spirit, between the spirit and the flesh. And that war is a war of the will. What will or whose will will I put first? Will I put my will with its passions and desires? Or will I put the Spirit's will first in my life? That's the tension that we face if we want to continue to sustain the Christian life. We have to fight with the Spirit against our passions and desires which don't want to be under the control of of the Spirit. And how we do this is not this verse... Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. But rather, it's 
verse 25, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. In other words, you and I cannot sustain the Christian life by the power of the Spirit in our own efforts. We can only do it by keeping in step with the Spirit. You see, a lot of times we think, well, I've got to crucify the flesh with its passions and desires. But the Apostle Paul clearly tells us that this has already happened the moment that we became, well, the moment we belong to Jesus Christ. The moment you and I become a Christ follower, belong to Jesus Christ, God makes us what we call in Christianity a saint. Someone who's separated from God. And God does this transaction that when we put our faith and trust in Christ Jesus, our flesh with its passions and desires have been crucified with Christ. In other words, when Christ died on the cross, I died with him. And so we don't sustain the Christian life by our works, by our self-discipline, but our, by our crucifying ourselves and putting ourselves to death, but rather we sustain the Christian life in the power of the Holy Spirit by keeping in step with the Spirit. In other words, by abiding in the Spirit, by resting in the Spirit, by trusting in the Spirit. And so we, we recognize that we cannot do this life in our own power, but only by the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, fruit is a natural byproduct of abiding. When you go out and you pick a, a piece of fruit from a, from a tree, you know, that fruit exists because and only because it remained on the branch. And if you and I are to sustain our, 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 our Christian life, to, to keep Christ at the center, the only way we can do that is by abiding and remaining in Christ. And the goal of all this, the purposes of, of all this, is that you and I can experience freedom. Now, you and I can experience freedom. And freedom is not the ability to do what I want to do, but freedom is the ability to do what God wants me to do, to manifest the characteristics of Christ that we see in these verses. That's what freedom is. Freedom is to, is to love. Freedom is to, is to have, jo have joy, to have all the characteristics of of the Spirit. That's what freedom is. And so as we go through this series, uh, we want to we wanna look at these nine characteristics of the Spirit-powered life that God has for each one of us. And so we're going to look today at the first one. If, if we can just go back, guys. So it says, the fruit of the Spirit is love. And so we want to look at this one. We want to look at love. And many commentators say, say that actually all the other fruits of the Spirit, because it says the fruit of the Spirit are all manifested by love. And so we want to look at this fruit of the Spirit, which is, which is love. Be, and I, I just want to just say that I really think there's three things that we need to know about the fruit of love. And we're going to look at a couple of uh, verses here. Uh, first of all, I want to look at Romans chapter 5 and verses 5 to 8, which was a, another letter written by the Apostle Paul. Uh, but uh, in Romans chapter 5, verses 5 to 8, it says, And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ 
died for us. This is the first thing we need to know about the fruit that produces love. And that is that this love saves us. This love saves us. It saves us from our shame. And it saves us from our sins. And all God asks is that we receive this love. God wants to pour out this love that he poured out on Christ on the cross. And he wants to pour that love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And it's wonderful if we just go back here, guys, because you know, there's just some great things about this love that saves and one of, one of the things we, we see is that this love that saves is a love that's undeserved. You know, if I look at my life and I'd say, okay, you know, when do I, before I became a Christ follower, when was I going to be a Christ follower? And I, I know that just, you know, obviously growing up in a religious home and stuff, that I was going to follow Christ eventually when I became a good person. But you see, this verse tells us, these verses tell us that at the right time is that when we recognize, when we see that we are powerless to save ourselves, that when we are powerless to earn the love of God, the moment you realize you cannot save yourself is the moment you're almost in, into the kingdom of God. It's a love that sa saves us. And Paul says, see. And so we need spiritual eyes to see that the love that saves us is a love that's undeserved and unearned. I am only here by the grace of God. I'm only here because I recognized I could not save myself. You know, I, I grew up uh, in, in Port Leash, and I, I tell my story that uh, I graduated from uh, secondary school uh, in Port Leash and went to uh, college in Carlo. And I graduated from college in Carlo, uh, a business college, uh, with a degree in gambling. Some of you might get it. Some of you might get it a little later. Uh, but I did not uh, get a degree in business uh, because I was uh, gambling too much. And I don't know uh, about you if you ever had an addiction or a, a, you know, a life-controlling problem. You know, it, it controls your life. It's called a life-controlling problem for, some, for, for right reasons. And I was, I was depressed, and, and I eventually became suicidal. I didn't have any way I could get off uh, this addiction. Uh, but I, I went into a church and I, I, I said, God, if you real, save me. I didn't know any Bible verse. Maybe you're here today. Maybe you're watching online. You don't know any Bible verse. I didn't, I didn't even know John 3.16. I knew no Bible verse. But there is a Bible verse that says, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And God saved me. And God uh, 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 freed me from the shame of, 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 of that addiction and the, and, the, and the sins of that addiction. And uh, this, this fruit of, of, of love that the Spirit has for us is that, that it is a love that saves us. I don't know what you need to be saved from today, but I want to let you know it's the love of God that's going to save you from it. And it's not you getting good. Are I getting good? It's just saying, God, I, I, I cannot do this. I, can't, I need your help. I need the love that you have for me. You know, someone once said uh, uh, that uh, when you look at, you know, just the depth of God's love, you know, Paul says in, in these verses that God demonstrates his love for us in this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So when we look at the demonstration of, of God's love for us, we see it on the cross, uh, Christ on the cross. But the interesting thing about that is when we look at the cross, we see a demonstration of God's love for his enemies. 
So if that is a demonstration of God's love for his enemies, how much more does he love us when we, when we accept Christ and become his children? And that love can only be received by faith. That love can only be received. We recognize it's a complete gift from God. I don't deserve it. I can't earn it. But I thank God that God has poured it into my heart and your heart and our hearts by the Holy Spirit. The second thing about this love, this fruit of love that the Holy Spirit gives to us to sustain us, is that it is a love <coughs> that sustains. You know, back in Galatians 5.25, you know, we're, we're, we're saved by the Spirit, and we're also to live in the Spirit. And so the love of God, the fruit of love, is not only a love that saves us, but it's also a love that sustains us. And we can see this. I want to give you a, 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 a couple of verses. It's in 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 to six, uh, 13 to 16. This is how we know that we live in Him and He in us. He has given us of His Spirit, and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in Him and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. You see, God does not only want us to know the love of God, and that love saves us, but he also wants us to rely on that love. That that love sustains us. Because you know that something that you start, when you start the Christian life, when you become a follower of Jesus, you know, as you attempt uh, to walk in, in, in that relationship with God, because that's what Christianity is, it's a relationship with God and Jesus, you know, we're going to face challenges because, you know, not only are we in a war between the flesh and the spirit, but I don't know about you. And I, some people say, well, you know, if I become a Christian, all my problems go away. Now, I don't know about you, but I think it's the opposite. When you become a Christian, war breaks out. And God knows this. And he says, I, only, I don't only give you a love that, uh, that saves you, but I also, gives you, I also give you a love that sustains you. See, we know God loves us, according to the Scripture, because he sent Jesus to save us. Jesus is the Savior of the world. There's no other way to be saved except through Jesus, because Jesus is the Son of God. And that love that saves us sustains us. And just like we need to receive the love to, sa to save us, we need to rely on the love to sustain us. So how does that look like? Well, when times are difficult, we have to trust in the love of God. We have to trust, even though I don't feel it, even though I don't see God, and, and Pastor Jamie talked about this uh, in, uh, you know, when he talked about Joseph in, in, in prison, and, uh, you know, it's remarkable that whenever time Joseph in the book of Genesis was in trouble, it always said, and the Lord was with him. And so we got to recognize that when times are difficult, when we don't know how we can sustain uh, the, 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 the spiritual life, the Christian life, we have to know and rely on this fact that God loves me. And that love is able to keep me and sustain me no matter what happens. Don't rely on your feelings. Rely on the facts. If we want to be sustained in our walk with God, we have, to, we have to rely on that love that sustains us. We cannot do it in our own efforts. And then, and then thirdly, not only does that fruit... The fruit of love save us and sustain us. Uh, but also, thirdly, this, this, this love is a love 
that sacrifices. It sacrifices. You know, uh, the measure of, of love is how much we sacrifice when we love. And this love that God has for us is a love that sacrifices. Not only did it sacrifice for us, but that love that the Holy Spirit gives us allows us <coughs> to sacrifice for other people. <coughs> I just want to go back to Galatians. and In chapter 5, verses 13 to 14, this is what Paul says about the food of love that sacrifices. He says, You, my brothers and sisters, <coughs> you were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. <coughs> <coughs> Thanks, Steve. Thank you. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. God has called us to reflect that love. See, we don't only receive the love and rely on the love, but that love that God has for us, he wants us to reflect that out to other people. The same love that frees you and me from shame and sin is given to us that we can use it uh, to free other people. There are many, many people that are looking for freedom. There are many people that are looking for freedom from bondage, from addictions and, and hopelessness and, and uh, relationships. And, and we are called, we are called to, to reflect that love to other people, <clears throat> to serve others. Because that's what God's love has been given to us for, in order that we might serve others. You see, what I've been, what I've been given is, is not for me alone, but it's also for others. God wants to bring others into the house of God. God wants to bring others into the house of freedom. <coughs> you know, we were up in Donegal uh, for anniversary, and we were staying in an Airbnb. It was a, a converted uh, cottage, <coughs> and it, <coughs> it was up a lane, and uh, like second or third day in, this this car pulls up, and it's uh, it's a it's a, a mother and the daughter, and we found out that the mother is eighty five years of age, and um, she had eleven children. So the youngest had brought her up to see this cottage because uh, this is where her great grandmother had been uh, grew up, and she had not seen the cottage in thirty years, and so they were <coughs> kind of walking around the cottage. And uh, we opened the door and we said, you know, is there anything we can do uh, for you? And they explained, you know, the, the story, what I just shared with you. And uh, <coughs> we said, well, why don't you come in? Why don't you come inside and see the cottage? And they were so excited that we let them come in and they took pictures around the fireplace. And we took pictures with them. You see, people are on the outside. Spiritually, people are, are looking for, for freedom. People are looking uh, for help. People are looking to come into the house of God spiritually. And God wants to give us a love that we can give to others and say, come in. All are welcome. All are welcome to come in and experience the freedom that only God can give us in Jesus Christ. And so, <clears throat> how do we produce this fruit of love? I'm just going to wrap this up now and, and the band is going to come, but uh, how, do we, how, do we, how do we produce this love? How, how do we produce this characteristic of Christ? Well, first of all, we got to receive God's love in ourselves. You see, you can't produce what you don't have. And the wonderful thing that we've been saying out of, 
out of out of the scriptures that that this 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 receiving of God's love is something as simple as ABC. We just first of all we just acknowledge that we're powerless. We acknowledge that we can't save ourselves. We we acknowledge that our willpower is not the power that we need. We just acknowledge it, and and when we acknowledge it, and we believe that what Christ did on the cross is a demonstration of that love, then we can uh, confess our need, and we can receive that love. So if you're here today, and and uh, you know you're not a believer in in Christ, and and you think being a believer in Christ or Christianity is all about being good and and following rules, it is none of those things. It is a relationship with Christ. And that relationship begins by receiving his love. He wants to put that love into our hearts. Then secondly, we produce that love by relying on God's love for yourself. I don't know what you're going through today, but I know in this room everyone has challenges. I know that everyone brought challenges in, and I know everybody will bring challenges out. You know, we sang about the future. You know, we have a God that holds that future, but we still face challenges. If we're going to produce that love, we have to rely on God's love for us. So the question we need to ask ourselves, will I trust the love of God to sustain me? In the days ahead, will I try? Maybe the Lord's challenging us today. Will we trust God? And then, obviously, to produce the love, the fruit of love, we have to we have to reflect God's love. We have to we have to go beyond ourselves, and we have to, you know. I love what Paul says to the Romans. He says, "You report your." Faith is being reported all over the world. It wouldn't be wonderful here at Lighthouse if our faith, our love was being reported all over the world. Wouldn't it be wonderful, you know, if we, if we didn't just keep it for ourselves, but we shared it with other people? See, the, the fruit is on the tree to be eaten. You know, <coughs> a couple of years ago, I was uh, helping a friend of ours uh, uh, move and... Um, so he had all this stuff uh, packed up in the house, and I looked outside, and I saw the tree, and it was full of ripe apples. And uh, I said to him, what are you going to do with the apples? He says, well, I'm just going to let them fall to the ground. I says, no, we're not. So I got some boxes, and I took every piece of fruit, apple, off that tree, and I gave those apples away. See, God wants us to produce fruit in order that we can give it away to other people. Everybody in our relationships needs love. And God wants to pour that love into our hearts by His Spirit so that we can give it to someone else. You know, being able to love others, particularly those that don't deserve it, is a miracle of God. See, it's easy to love someone and it loves you back. But it's a miracle to love someone that does not love you. And that's the fruit of love God wants to produce in life. So maybe you heard today and, and you know, you're in a, you're, you know, you just feel God is speaking to your heart. And he, and he, and he wants you to, uh, you know, release that love. He, you know, he's putting people on your heart even now. And he says, you know, I, I want you to go. I want you to do this. I want you to bring uh, the love of God to me. Say yes to God. Let him produce that fruit of love in your life. It's not by your power. It's by the Holy Spirit.